pieces of cinnamon cookie here that cook under these pieces of wood. And then he puts them over here and shapes them like roof tiles. And they've been making them since 1805. Traditional Japanese cinnamon cookie, specialty of Kyoto. It's like the, the Kitaza, the Northern Theater. And if you just see, you can see the South Theater picking, picking in between those uh, the buildings there. Kabuki is kind of like a Shakespearean drama, Broadway musical, done Japanese style. Anything you can't explain something in Japanese, you say, oh, done Japanese style. It was started here on the riverbanks. I don't know if you can see diagonally across the street, there's a statue. A statue with the lady holding a sword and the fan. That's a woman named Izumona Okuni. So in the Edo period, 1658, there was a caste system. So the artists weren't very high in the social standing, so they pretty much performed wherever they could. And they got the word kabuki from the Japanese word kabuki mono. Because Izumo no Kuni and her troop are maybe doing a little bit more than just singing and dancing on the riverbanks. I'll leave that up to your imagination. Well, the officials didn't like what was going on in public. They said, ladies, off the riverbanks into the theaters. This was 1603. The official family laid out Kabuki. At that time, we had seven Kabuki theaters on this corner. And for lack of, uh, for lack of a better term, you're going to call this area Kyoto Broadway slash Vegas. Because they study the same traditional arts, hang out with the geisha as well. So we're just going to make a market by Mary Bell of New York. A couple of attractive young ladies. It's a Gayon Geisha district. Can you, can anyone hear on Geisha district? We have five Geisha districts in Kyoto. This is the biggest. Across the river you have the Pontecho district, which is about 400 meter long. Uh, that's the third biggest district. Uh, what are Geisha districts? Geisha districts are where they live, work, and study. There's also lots of restaurants and other business in there as well. This area is probably one of the most picturesque parts of the Geisha district. Anything shot and filmed in Kyoto, whether it be domestic or international, usually does a shot up at this next bridge. This is a Shirakawa. These, when they're in full bloom, can be quite beautiful. You see a lot of people are taking advantage of the beauty for their wedding photos. Is it okay? Take a picture? Yeah. The young girls dressed in kimonos. Blossoms. A few. Ume kinanobaka. So the person who pr uh, prunes the, uh, the cherry tree is a fool. And the person who doesn't prune the plum tree is a fool. Because you can see how the plum trees, please, uh, plum trees grow, they kind of strangle each other and they can end up killing each other. However, the, the sakura, the cherry blossom trees, are very delicate, so if you prune them too much, they get infected. You can see how some of them are rotting from the middle out, and they need kind of crutches for their branches. Back on her beautiful dress. Oh. Tea house, a Geisha Entertainment tea house, right here in front of me. Tea houses are a private um, oh, businesses that are members only, and that's where and they act as a concierge between the customer and the geisha. Oh They're beautiful. Can we do? Can we take pictures? Yeah. Girl. Oh, so Gion Shibashi area. This area, honestly, if you see anything shot in Kyoto, traditional, I mean, anything, they'll do a shot here. And have any of you seen the movie Memoirs of a Geisha? Or read the yeah. book? Yeah. Well, this bridge, if you remember in the book and movie where she was a little girl and she was crying, yeah. and the chairman said, don't cry, little girl, here's some ice cream. This is supposed to be the bridge. I was actually the location scout for the movie, but obviously not a very good one, because they had to shoot the whole movie in California. <laughs> Kyoto didn't really give permission to shoot here. Hmm. With 1,600 temples, 400 shrines, 17 UNESCO World Heritage Sites. I think in 2015 there's 56, 56 million visitors. Second wow. most visited destination in the world next to Mecca. Hmm. So they didn't really need Hollywood money. <laughs> uh, this is a shrine dedicated to the arts. There's a, um, what was his name? There's a woman, uh, 
Morgan, J.P. Morgan's nephew, Egbert. But he was traveling around the world like you do, and he came to Kyoto. He fell in this, fell in love with this woman called Oyuki. Well, in those days, you actually were bounded to a contract. You were actually <laughs> sold into the, the geisha district, not as a prostitute, still as a geisha. So, but you had to you fill, fulfill obligations and also pay back your debts. So he was in love with her. So he, he first, love at first sight. He wanted to marry her. She kept refusing because she had a boyfriend on the side who is um, a Kyoto University student. Which in those days, if you went to like that's Yale of Kyoto. So if you went to, you had a you know a bright future. So she was actually paying his student fees for him with the promise that when he graduated he would come and sweep her off her feet and they'd be, live happily ever after. She ended up marrying uh, J.P. Morgan's they went back to the nephew. Their marriages weren't really looked that greatly upon, so they ended up moving uh, to France. Unfortunately, he died of a sudden heart attack without crossing the T's and dotting the I's, so she didn't really get the big, yeah, she, she had to, she actually came back to Kyoto and bought that little Your house. Your shoes? Your shoes? Can I take pictures? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> chef. Refugee school. And this is where their schedules are posted, what days and what classes they're taking. So it's, being a geisha is actually a real, a real job. They pay taxes and they're covered. Red tag on top of it. Those are for hot drinks. They don't take credit cards, do they? Not yet. We're lucky any place takes credit cards. Five years ago, nowhere took credit cards. Really? Yeah. Mm. You couldn't get money out 127 million people and 5 million vending machines. Five years ago, there was no English anywhere. They didn't take credit cards, and they've changed quickly. <laughs> Here's where you can rent your kimonos. Geisha last night. She said a lot of Japanese women in their 30s and their 40s are hiring geisha now. For what? For company, for fun, to learn how to balance femininity with strength, to look at beautiful kimonos, to appreciate the art. Some women hire the geisha to take them to sumo wrestling, to watch with them. Some men do too, some couples do. My wife and I will hire a geisha, we'll just take her out for dinner and go to karaoke after the night. We don't have, we don't have children, so. How much is that for I don't know how much it costs exactly because I never had the same bill twice, but. <laughs> what do you do? Um do you uh, negotiate beforehand? No, prices are set by the unions. All districts have unions, so they're all set by unions. And by the time we get the bill, we call it the love letter, uh, it's, much, it's probably a lot higher than the original bill. Shabu. Shabu, but this looks like shabu's and appetizers. Beef, there's the shabu shabu. Sorted vegetables, rice dessert. Here's the assorted vegetables. Inside here is boiling water over a very powerful gas burner and we cooked our own food in it. Each place setting had two sauces to dip the cooked food into. Partitions are used between the tables as seen here or removed for our large group. Cool idea.